So what I'm saying is that there's going to be a false flag event that will get the people united against Russia and go to war. Right. And here's the fact. You brought it up before, and I'm going back to it. I wanted to build a scenario. Are they going to do what you said? Bring us totally into the new world order, robbing us of our rights, our freedom, our money, and every... Yes. yes. They already did it with the COVID war. They're going to do with this because when all else fails, they take you to war. Exactly. They'll take us to war, and then we're doing this to save America. All your money now will be digital. We will track every penny that you spend. We will know where you spent it, when you spent it, and we'll take every penny in taxes that we can grab from you. You know what scares me the most about that? I mean, there are a few things. When you look at the CBDCs and the most current report that I've read on them. Number one, do you know that they actually have changed the definition of money? Where it used to be a medium of exchange, uh, let's see, it, a tool of measure, a medium of exchange, a short-term tool of, of value so you're fairly paid for your labor and a long-term store of value so that no matter when you use it, it always retains that value and you're fairly paid for your labor. They, I don't know when they did it because I couldn't find, they, they just cleaned everything up so nicely. But number one, they took the fourth one out, the long-term store of value, which is really more honest since we know that these dollars lose value, you know, the longer you hold them. But when they bring in the CBDCs, they have also eliminated officially in that system once they do that, then the third spot is a short-term store of value because you will have your pay or any money directly deposited into a negative yielding account and they can determine how low that yield's going to go. So you're not ever going to be fairly paid and money is now simply a tool of measure and a tool of barter. Wait a minute. We work for this money. So they have to hide that and they'll use war for sure to do it. I mean, they do that every time, 100% of the time. What followed the Great Depression? World War II. What followed the dot-com bust? Oh, you mean the war on terror? Oh, yeah, you mean, you mean the NASDAQ was down 66% before 9-11? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, everything was crashed. Well, oh, forecast in the Trends Journal, October 1999, that the markets, the dot-com bust would happen by the second quarter of 2000. Again, yeah. Bush's, Bush's popularity rating is going down the toilet where that little piece of crap should be flushed down right now. A murdering little lying. He should be brought up on war crime charges along with the rest of them. But going back to it, when all else fails, they take you to war. The global economy is failing oh. at a level unprecedented in modern history. Right. We are in for a socioeconomic and geopolitical crisis, the likes of which we are unimaginable because exactly. let's talk about the unimaginable the covid war breaks out chinese lunar new year 2020 the year of the rat <laughs> january by february everything starts closing down by march the markets are crashing people are freaking out hey don't worry about it stay home don't hey here's some money Hey, yeah. you got a business, you want some money? Hey, here's some money. Hey, don't worry about it. Yeah, we're going to lower interest rates to zero. So all you big guys, you can keep buying up more and your merger and acquisition activity will hit an all-time high in 2021. We'll pump in over $6 trillion from the government and where the banksters will pump in all the money that you need. Same thing in Europe. Negative interest rates. As inflation's going way, 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 way up, and these little freaks <laughs> lying about it, saying, no, it's only temporary. No, it's only transitory. And now in the woke world, Lynette, let's call it transgendatory, because we'll really be stupid about it. So now they plumped in all of this dough all around the world to artificially prop up equities. Oh, the housing boom? The housing boom? All artificial. 
And now the economy is slowing down from an artificially propped up one. This is going to crash the loudest crash ever heard in modern history. Oh, no, no doubt. And, you know, really, for me, having studied currency life cycles, this is the end. This is the end of this currency experiment, period. And that's why things are so much more than what we've ever seen. And, and it's going to get a whole lot worse. Again, you know, I don't give financial advice. And, you know, we have no advertisements in the Trends Journal. We don't do it. I, I only speak for myself. I began my career when the Iranian crisis broke out. People were taught to hate Iran without knowing the detail of the United States overthrow of the democratically elected government of Mossadegh in 1953 because Winston Churchill, the MI6, and the CIA wanted the oil that was controlled by Standard Oil, which is ExxonMobil today, and, and, and uh, Anglo-Iranian oil, better known today as BP. But anyway, so as everybody's learning to hate the Iranians like they hate the Russians, I said, what's going to happen? I said, golden oil prices are going to go up. Mm -hmm. And I was working in D.C. and Chicago in those days. I was the chief government affairs specialist uh, for the chemical industry. And um, I started playing the futures market. $5,000 I turned into almost three quarters of a million dollars within the next two years. And that's when I quit my job. And I started to grow up, too. You know, I wouldn't know what I know, by the way, if I wasn't on the other side. Exactly. And you, talking, and you were talking about the currencies. I have a photograph of me and John Connolly. That's the, he was the governor of Texas that took the bullet in the back sitting in front of uh, JFK. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to meet me back in 1992. I have a photo of me, him, and his wife, Nellie, in front of the book depository. The first time back since the assassination. Anyway, making a very long story short. And I'm going back to exactly what you said about the currencies. As we're walking back into the Anatole Hotel, he said to me, Gerald, I read your book, Trend Tracking, Time Magazine, Five Other Mega Trends. And he said, and I know your heart's in the right place. Now, remember, this is the guy that took the bullet in the back sitting in front of Kennedy. He was also the Treasury Secretary under Richard Nixon, a Republican, when they took the United States off the gold standard. We're going back in, he said to me, I know you're not in the right place. He said, but you don't have a clue what's going on. And neither do the American people. Because if they did, there'd be a revolution in this country. Yes. Oh, you just gave me chills. Go ahead. That was 1992. We stayed in contact. I knew he was going to die. Uh, the guy that put the meeting on, John J. Hooker, uh, uh, I said, Jesus, he's on his way out. I was sitting, we was in a limousine. It was me, John J. Hooker, um, uh, Pat Cadell, who was the pollster for, for uh, Perot at the time, and Rama Fox, that was Larry King's girlfriend at the time. And it was, it was Hooker that got Perot on Larry King. Anyway, we're in a limousine, and we're coming back from the Anatole, from the, uh, the site. And uh, I said to him, how are you feeling? He said, I'm not feeling well. I looked at his hands and he had all these purplish pink splotches on him. And I knew he was on Prendazone because my father, may I rest in peace, worked in the shipyards in, in, during World War II and got asbestos poisoning. And I have a photo of my dad and I had a going away party for him. His hands were all, you know, like, and with all these purple splotches and Connolly had the same ones. I said, how are you feeling? He said, not good. He said, I got adhesions in my lungs and they got me on prednisone. So I told Hooker, I said, you know, he's going to die soon. He said, Daryl, how could you say that? I said, I've seen the picture before. I stayed in contact with Conley from October to February. And then he died in April. And what's happened in this country, it breaks my heart. You know, I just turned 76. And I said to myself, I'm going to fight for the spirit of 1776. I'm only me because I'm a Napolitano, born in the Bronx, right after the war, born to be free. And now I got some little clown telling me what to do? What, are you kidding me? What, are you kidding me? If a, if a little Chucky Schumer, a little Chucky Schumer, hey, Salenti, come over here, I want to talk to you. I said, 
F you, you want to talk to me, come over here. I'm a man. I'm not your slave. And everybody's become the plantation workers of on Slavelandia to these little clown boys and girls playing politician. They are going to, they've taken us to World War III. They are demonic. They're mentally ill. These are evil people. And when World War III breaks out, whoop, end of the world. Again, World War II is not ancient history. Oh, Europe right. was destroyed. Uh, nuclear explosions, end of life, and imbeciles saying things like, oh, I'm going to build a bomb shelter. Oh, don't forget, when the bomb goes off, we get go under the desk and put your hands down. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> you're going to live in a bomb shelter? You're going to come out to hell? They asked Albert Einstein, a cat that knew a thing or two about you know atomic bombs, what kind of weapons will be used to fight the Third World War? He said, I don't know. He said, but they'll be using sticks and stones to fight the fourth. If we don't unite for peace and stop this, it's over. It's over. Yeah. I, I, I could not agree with you more. And all the signs of the end are actually there.